This video is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. So welcome back to the video series where you guys send me different things to check out on Amazon and then I order it and then we see if it's actually any good. Today's victim <coughs> product is the iPega Gladiator game joystick for the Nintendo Switch. The idea of this is to actually take your Switch and turn it into a little mini arcade, essentially. It actually has like a full arcade stick, buttons laid out kind of in the fighting kind of style where you have like, you know, three buttons, then three buttons set up similar to what you might have for like a Street Fighter or something. And it's all supposed to just work in portable mode. Your Switch just basically docks in this thing and then it turns it into a little controller and it holds it up to the point where it looks kind of like an arcade unit. Now, I thought we would check it out, maybe take it apart a little bit to see what's going on inside, although it doesn't seem like there's any uh, electricity or anything running through it, like it's not like a pass through for charging. So there might actually not be a ton going on in there, but it'd still be worth opening up and then we'll see if it's actually any good. This thing's about $30 and there is a link down below if you wanna check out more information about it. But let's go ahead and start by unboxing it. Now I've known I iPega for like cell phone accessories and stuff, but they actually put this one together specifically for the Switch with the form factor and everything. And they did an all right job I think with the box. They have some box art kind of on the sides and everything, but the back, it's kind of funny. They have like the that transparent looking PNG background here where it has like the, the gray and kind of lighter gray checkerboard around, but they do have images, renderings of how it looks and everything. Not a ton of information on the back, but I guess for what this is, you don't need much information. Turbo function, everything is included. So let's open this guy up. I've already cut the plastic and the tape on the sides to make it easier to get right in. And it doesn't seem like there's a ton actually in here, but again, I don't really know if you need a ton. Very, uh, very bright kind of backing here. The buttons are like this blue with the joystick sharing kind of this reddish pink salmon color. It's a very interesting choice. Uh, that's pretty much all that's in here other than some instructions. There's not, I mean, I guess there's not much you would need. Like this doesn't need a cable cause it's not a pass through charger. It doesn't have a battery built in or anything. It all runs from the switch. It basically acts as a wired controller the entire way through. That's basically what it is. So it's like, this would be a controller off the side. A cable would go to the switch and plug in. It doesn't have that. Instead it has this little stump of a USB-C port right here, input, and then you drop your switch in. Similar to what the dock is like, but there's no give. Keep that in mind. This is just a straight up like a, a solid, input just, or, or yeah, input just sticking out, you know, output just sticking out there and you drop your switch in. So you gotta make sure the switch goes in 100% correct. Very, very light, not uh, not heavy at all. It does have rubber feet on the bottom here. So it, it seems to stick pretty well actually, but it's not heavy. So I feel like just tapping it will make it kind of knock around. They might do a bit better by putting some weights inside on the bottom, it might, up the price a little bit to put some nice weights in there, but that would at least help. It's similar to what was with the Mega SG where they had weights and the weights would actually weigh it down fairly well because without it, it was basically how this is like super light and it, the rubber feet don't do as good of a job with that. However, I assume when you add the switch to the equation, it'll make it a bit heavier and uh, less prone to movement. There's not a lot going on in the instructions. It shows you uh, where to plug the switch in, the turbo functionality, and that there's an LED right here. Otherwise though, I guess we'll just go ahead and drop the switch in and check out this guy and see how it all works. So the switch just kind of drops in here. It does look like it has a nice little click when you do that. And then I guess at this point, I'm set up. Unfortunately, the home button doesn't work from a state of like complete like sleep for your switch. So let me go ahead and just turn the switch on there. So now it's on. The red button's now on. Now let me see if I turn this back off. It unfortunately still can't do it. I wonder if I turn it off. I have that guy up. I just wanted to test the speakers as well. Because we what they've done is they've put the speakers down here. So if you kind of look at this, the speakers are down here but they're on either side of these kind of these red lips that hold it. And, and the switch is held fairly well right now. Like it's not really going anywhere. And I have this thing completely tipped over. So it's very sturdy for the switch to be there, which is good. The speakers are on either side of these, so it kind of separates them a bit, but it still seems to have full, uh, yeah. So the speakers still project completely fine. 
and they're actually kind of pointed at you because of the the angle of the the switch takes when it's kind of sitting like this so that's kind of cool you actually have full speakers blasting at you without even having to hold the switch it's kind of just resting there um, right now I'm gonna turn that back down so I don't blow out the microphone <laughs> that you guys are trying to hear me through uh, so let's see it the joystick is not a clicky joystick this is a joystick that is uh, it's it's smooth basically there's no you can't feel the corners essentially anywhere that may turn some people off because it can be kind of hard to tell where you are with it you know as opposed to like left right uh, up to the right you know down left quarter circle all that stuff can be kind of hard to tell where your starting point and end point is but it it's at least it feels smooth like actually moving it is is a very smooth movement there's not a lot of tension in the stick either so keep that in mind it's it's very loose feeling um, but it feels clean at least let me go into sure we'll do Contra the Contra collection. Let's jump in here while we're doing this. Uh, looking at the buttons, X, Y, L, A, B, R, they have them set up. So hopefully if there's a fighting game you really like, you can remap buttons in that game, I, I would hope, uh, because you'll probably have to do that. ZL, ZR are up top here. They're kind of out of the way. So you will have to reach and press them. Turbo's also up here. And then you have plus and minus up to the left as well. And then our home button is all the way up to the right. I like that the home button is like way out of the way because of course, if you touch it, it'll take you back to the home menu and that could get annoying if you're getting really into like a combo or something, you could accidentally hit it if it was closer. And we've seen some controllers do that. So I do like that they uh, did not do that. That is that is very, very good on their, on their part. Let's just jump into Contra. We'll play a little bit here while, while we're doing this. I also have Final Fight on here we can jump into as well. Uh, so Contra is uh, a game that I would actually like to play with kind of an arcade setup. The issue that I'm seeing, so the buttons are responsive, like everything feels fine. I'm actually having an alright time with the joystick too. It's not, I thought I would have a hard time telling where I am with the joystick because it is, uh, it, it's free floating essentially. It's not clicky or it doesn't have like corners that you can feel, but I'm actually not having a hard time kind of figure out where I am with the joystick, which is good. The only issue I have is it is very, very cramped. Like it is extremely cramped with this thing. So having everything like this is kind of tough. I could see some people with even larger hands running into each other while they're trying to play. And I'm already kind of feeling a bit of a, a cramp from this setup. They need something for your wrist right here. That would probably help a lot. Otherwise though, it's not bad. I think what I would like from this is this is a, this is a cool idea and a good starting point. But I think what I would like to see is a wider base. So what I'm trying to say is if this was wider in terms of like where your palms are, I think that would be better. Like it doesn't have to be the width of the switch or even smaller. And I know this is only $30. So what I think I would like to see is, uh, let me go in there. One that was like this, this wide maybe. Like like this like larger than the switch and the switch just sits in it and then you have like a full arcade setup. I know it's not as portable. This is kind of a, a portable setup. Like you could technically throw this in a backpack, but the idea of having one that's wider and, and a full arcade stick that the switch just sits in it's kind of neat. So next up, I'm jumping in the Fatal Fury. I wanted to test kind of the quarter circle on this to see how it all how it all kind of feels together. However, I've always noticed in Fatal Fury that the uh, when you when you play, it's pretty much them constantly like they're on you pretty good, but but it does feel pretty good for the quarter circles. Like the actual uh, the actual combination, the running from down to, to right with it with the joystick feels pretty good. I wasn't sure how it would go over just because it's not like a clicking joystick. And a lot of people like that for quarter circles to be able to figure out where you are when you're, when you're moving the joystick. That right there feels pretty good when you hit the quarter circle. So, so far I, I'm actually kind of impressed with the the iPega, again, just a few things that I would change up from it, which include a wider base. But how about we go ahead and take this guy apart now, see what's going on inside right after a word from our sponsor, Squarespace. All right, look, building a website can be very intimidating and it can be kind of hard to figure out how to even get started. That's where Squarespace comes in and with their all-in-one platform that lets you go from picking out your domain to building a fully featured site using entire templates. You can use video backgrounds to set your site apart and view where your visitors are coming from with a full traffic overview. Search engine optimization is even made easier with no additional plugins needed. During my ongoing struggles with a certain game's localization, I realized Everything on the internet is taken seriously, so I had no choice. There we go. Now, 
we wait. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash spawnwave to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So on the bottom, we have four different screws. They appear to be Phillips head, but they are underneath of these, the paddings here, and the padding is actually pretty solid. Like, these are stuck on there pretty good, but a little bit of ripping should get them off of there, and I think it's just the four Phillips head screws. Like I said, very light, not as much going on in here when it comes to this kind of stuff. So I think we'll actually be in pretty quick. All right, so there we go. The bottom came right off. This part here, this like uh, reddish salmon pink color is actually seems to be its own piece, but you can see we only have a couple boards here. A lot of screws actually holding everything in, which is good. Yeah, so we have actually quite a bit of screws to kind of hold everything up. Everything here seems to be soldered in, like the joystick is straight up soldered in. So if you're someone who likes to try to change these things out, doesn't look like that's gonna happen uh, with this guy, unfortunately, for, for those who like to try to mod these things. Although this isn't an expensive stick as it is, like it's like $30. So most likely you're not buying this thing to modify, but I can see why some people might like the portability aspect to it, where it's this little fight stick and maybe you could change out the stick uh, but most likely from what I'm seeing just from underneath here once I take this, these screws out and this board comes out We're probably going to see just a straight-up soldered in stick and that Probably isn't something you're gonna play around with to customize. So here's the board uh, The buttons are all pretty straightforward. They're literally just larger Like face buttons that you would have for uh, like they don't even really fit in there in a certain way They're just circles but they do press down on a pretty straightforward rubber membrane here to get that. So they're not like mechanical switches, nothing like that. Uh, it, it is built to be affordable, I guess, would be the best way to say it, because it is set up similar to like a, a controller, how that's all done, where you have a rubber membrane that then pushes down on a board, shorts at a certain point, and that gives you uh, your button press. So that's kind of what you're working with there. Nothing at all mechanical for anyone who is curious about that part. And the joystick is essentially, yeah, so it's very similar. It's a bit larger. It's not like the exact same thing. It's similar to what you'd find in like an Xbox One. Think about that, right? Uh, kind of controller where you have that joystick. That's why it felt it feels so smooth. It feels very similar to that. Again, not not the exact same one, although you can, you can click it down. I didn't realize that till now. <laughs> you can actually click this guy in. But yeah, it has that kind of feeling where it's a little looser, I would actually say, than like an Xbox One joystick, even a PlayStation 4 or, or like the Switch Pro Controller joystick, but it definitely has that kind of feeling. No clicking or anything. Um, it is just, this is literally just a controller kind of put into like an arcade joystick looking setup. And that's gonna do it here for the iPega Gladiator game joystick for the Nintendo Switch. A cool idea, sure. But would other companies, even iPega, I guess, but other companies be willing to build a bigger joystick, a better joystick, a more expensive joystick with this same idea where the Switch sits into the top and it kind of turns into kind of a little mini arcade, maybe even with two players, right? You could have technically two spots, but again, is that interesting enough to people to have that? I'm very curious what you think. The one thing I like about the Switch is that it does seem to kind of bring about these very interesting, very unique accessories that we wouldn't have seen before with other systems, so kind of neat to see these kind of things. But let me know, again, what you guys think down below. Make sure you like the video if you enjoyed it, dislike it if not, and I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>